Welcome to the second episode in the first season of this series for Bitcoin for Beginners called Exploring Exchanges, where we will dive into exchanges, show you how they work, and how you make trade orders by showing live examples. Today's episode we will be showing one of the most popular crypto to crypto exchanges, Binance, and more specifically the stop limit order, because this was requested by one of our community members. Some time ago, Kevin already made an introduction video about Binance where he showed the general sign-up process, depositing and doing standard orders buying IOTA. For these basic steps, I recommend you watch his video, which you can find the link in the description down below. So in our video today, we can skip most of those steps. What will we do today? I will explain you a little background of the Binance exchange, explain the different order types, show how to place a stop limit order, and as a bonus, we will show you how you can convert your dust balances on Binance into Binance Coin, which is something that is recently added to the exchange. If you want to skip through the video to see specific parts, we have included timestamps in the description. And while you're there anyway, don't hesitate to give us a thumbs up, and if you subscribe to our channel, that would be even more amazing. Don't forget to hit the bell button for faster notifications of new content. So with that out of the way, let's dive into it. First, a short introduction about Binance. Binance is truly one of the biggest success stories and demonstrates how cryptocurrencies can change the way we finance new business and how an ICO token can truly be a new type of financial asset and achieve wide adoption plus have real world use. In summer last year, 2017, CEO and founder Chang Heng Zhao and his team raised $15 million in their ERC20 token ICO for Binance Cohen to fund the creation of the Binance Exchange platform. Binance Cohen is a crypto asset that can be used on the Binance Exchange to receive 50% discount on trading fees. The idea is therefore that most Binance users will buy Binance Coin when they trade on Binance because everyone wants to pay less trading fees, obviously. So more trading and more users means higher demand for the coin, which also should result in a higher price for Binance Coin. If Binance is doing well, coin holders are doing well too. You can see that that has certainly been the case in early January when mass massive amounts of new people were entering crypto and signing up for exchanges and Binance was really a popular choice. So much even that Binance had a record of 240,000 new users in only one hour. It became so crazy that they temporarily had to shut down new user signups in order to scale their technology first. You can clearly see that the price development as a result of high demand for Binance going very well correlated in that period. From prices in the range of 10 to 20 cents at launch, it reached an all-time high of almost $24.5 and is now worth around $13 in this more quiet season. Binance as an exchange grew explosively from an already amazing profit for such a young startup of around 7.5 million in last quarter of 2017 to an astonishing 200 million in the first quarter of 2018, being already more profitable than the biggest bank of Germany, Deutsche Bank, and that in only six months of its existence. Truly, Binance is one of the biggest success stories in the cryptocurrency industry. Trading volume on Binance is one of the world's biggest with more than 2 billion US dollar traded in cryptocurrency on a daily basis. Since November 2017, Binance added the option for stop limit orders and in this video we will be concentrating on this order type. But to understand its concept we may need to define each order type to be able to see the differences between them. So we have Three types of orders, market order, limit order, and stop limit order. With a market order, you say buy or sell at the first and best available price as soon as possible. With a limit buy order, you say I want to buy this amount of coins, but not for a higher price than my limit price. 
and with a limit cell order you say sell x amount of cones but not for less than my limit price and for a stop limit order you say in a case of selling you want to sell when a cohen is equal or lower than the stop price and you want to buy when a cohen is equal or higher than your stop price so what are the use cases for a stop limit order first of all you can use it for a stop loss which means automatically exit a losing trade to cut your losses or you can use it to lock in profit because it automatically can exit a profitable trade on a significant reversal to prevent giving back more of the profits. Or you can use it if you want to enter a trade on a breakout. For example, when a coin price breaks an entry level that you had identified. There are, however, some limitations to the stop limit order. A stop limit is only useful for Cohen trading against base currencies that are listed in pairs of Bitcoin, Ethereum and or USD or USD Tether. If a Cohen is only listed against Bitcoin and or Ethereum, then the stop limit is useful if you want to trade against Bitcoin or Ethereum value of the Cohen. However, it is not useful if you want to trade against USD value of the Cohen. So if you want to trade a Cohen against USD value, stop limit is only useful for Cohens that are listed against USD or USD Tether. In case of Binance, the USD Tether trading pairs. Okay, after all this theory, let's now enter the Binance trading platform. I have already signed up for an account and deposited Ether, so we can directly log in and start. However, I do want to demonstrate two security features of Binance anyway, because account security is of utmost importance in this crypto world that is rampant of hackers and phishing attempts. So better be safe than sorry. So when we log in, we arrive in our account screen where we can see our security options. Of course, we need to enable Google authentication, which is very important very clear step-by-step -step guide in this process. If you haven't the app already, you can install it here. Then you go to the next step. If you have already uh, the app, then you can scan the code with your Google app and then go to the next step. You will write down the backup key on a piece of paper and save it in a very safe place because you will need it if something happens with your phone and you need to restore your authentication code. And then in the last screen, you can enter that key, your login password and the authentication code from your phone. And then you can enable Google authentication. The other security step that I want to show you is the anti-phishing code, which works as follows. Uh, you can just set a code that you want and from then on every official email from Binance will include your code so you can recognize that it's most likely an official email from Binance and not a phishing attempt so very important to also set this feature and here you see the account 24 hour withdrawal limit of 2 Bitcoin if you have an unverified account if you need to withdraw more Bitcoin, you will need to submit verification documents. And if you want to use the BNB Binance Coin 50% uh, discount on trading fees, you of course need to have Binance Coin in your exchange wallet, but also you need to have this set on and then you're ready to go. So let's go to the exchange. You have two options. You can choose the basic or the advanced exchange version. We will show both, but we will start with basic. Okay, and that will lead you to this screen. Chart that you see here are all the uh, latest prices in a line graphic. Uh, but you can also show 
minute candles or hour candles or daily weekly candles you can just adjust here in the menu if you want if you want to see the depth chart you will just click on depth and it will show you the accumulated uh, orders from the order book green is buy orders red is sell orders here is the order book for the sell orders the buy orders the big number here is the latest order here you have trade history with all previous trades and in this column you can find the different trading pairs uh, for each coin obviously in bitcoin you can find the most trading pairs here you have ethereum okay uh, here you have the order form and open orders and your order history but we have no orders yet so let's go to the order form and uh, perform some standard orders we have limit market and stop limits we will check all of those uh, first of all i want to buy some uh, binance coin that's bnb coin and because i have deposited ether i will need to buy it with ether so i can just find it by filling in bnb and here we have the trading pair for binance coin so i just want to buy bnb coin very fast so i will choose a market order and the price will be the market price meaning the first available best price as soon as my order will hit the exchange so we don't know that yet um, and i can fill in an amount of uh, binance coin that i want to buy um, they are around 13 dollars currently and i will probably only need 0 0.1 and just click buy and the order already succeeded so now i have a small bnb balance so now from my other trades the trading fees will not be deducted from my other cryptocurrencies but from my bnb balance and i have a 50 percent discount on the trading fees okay let's move on because now i want to buy neo and i'm going to use a normal limit order click neo and we will go to limit order so first i enter the amount and that is 0.4 neo and then i can specify the price i want to buy it for less than the current market price so i set the price for 0.1014 and then i only have to click buy so now you can see the order in the order book it's here 0.4 neo and first all these orders would need to be fulfilled until our order can be traded you can also see our order in open orders buy order 0.4 Okay, we're not going to wait until the price hits our limit, so we're just going to cancel. And we will enter another order, and this time we will set the price higher. So if we set the limit at 0 0.1018, it's actually above the current price, so it should execute immediately unless suddenly the price jumps over the price that i had given as a limit so we're going to buy and our order already executed and we can see that we bought for less than our limit price at 0 0.101736 so the stop limit order is available in the basic version as well as in the advanced version of the exchange and they both work more or less the same so just for uh, an example i will now use the advanced exchange so you know how it looks like okay so now we are in the advanced screen the main difference is 
uh, more the layout, but you can also use more tools and indicators for uh, some chart analysis. So if you want to do a stop limit order, you click here, stop limit. And for example, if you want to set a stop loss, you will fill in the sell neo form. Suppose the price is now $75.50. Suppose we say that our stop loss should be $75, that we want to exit the trade. We will set in 75 and stop. And then you need to give a limit. The limit says, okay, we're going to send the order to the exchange uh, when it's the price is 75. But if it goes lower than uh, your limit, then the order won't execute. So you shouldn't set your limits too close to the stop price because then the order might potentially not execute. So in this case, we set it at 74 and we will sell our available balance, which is 0.4 NEO. Okay, and here it says if the last price drops to or below 75 US dollar tether, an order to sell 0.4 NEO at a price of 74 USDT will be placed. Doesn't mean it's going to execute at 74, but you will receive at least 74. Okay, so we can say yes. And when you see order submitted, it means the order has been received by Binance. If you want to see it, you can click on open orders. And there you will see our order stop limits, the sell, and the trigger is $75. So if it hits $75, the order will be submitted to the exchange and will be executed as soon as possible, as long as the price doesn't drop lower than $74. So another example of a use case is, uh, for example, if I have identified a price where I want to enter a trade that is higher than the current price. For example, if I think that there is a breakout at that certain price level, in that case, I can use top limit to buy the cryptocurrency in this example, uh, NEO. So for example, if I say, I think, my breakout will be at 76. I will set my stop price at 76. So at $76, the order will be sent to the exchange and executed as soon as possible. But I will also have to set a limit. In this case, I will say 77. Don't put the limit too close to your stop price or else if the price jumps, your order may not be executed. But if you don't have enough balance, you may not be able to buy enough coins that you plan to. In this case, we can buy about half NEO, 0.5 NEO. So if I press buy, then it says if the last price rises to or above 76 USD tether, an order to buy. 0.5 NEO at a price of no more than 77 US dollar uh, will be placed and you need to agree. Okay, so you can see that also this order has been submitted. A trigger condition is when the price of NEO goes above $76. So let's just wait if one of these two orders will be triggered if the price moves into either one direction. And by the way, I believe you can do no more than two stop limit orders at the same time on the same trading pair. So that's good to know. And also, if you click the question mark uh, symbol here next to stop limit, it will lead you to a page that explains stop limit order in more detail so i would definitely recommend to read it before you place your stop limit order and by the way as long as 
the trigger condition has not been met or your stop price hasn't been reached, your stop limit order will not appear in the order book because it officially hasn't been sent to the exchange yet. It's just waiting for the price to trigger. And boom, while I was away, the price here just shot over $76 and my stop limit buy order got executed and I bought some NEO on that price. Let me look at the order history. As you can see, the order is failed at $76.065 that I bought uh, NEO for. So great, it, it actually works. So when I'm done trading and for example, I want to withdraw my NEO, I will need to exit the advanced trading screen and go to my account. I do this by clicking on the Binance logo, then you go to funds, withdrawals, and then here you can enter your NEO withdrawal address, which is your personal NEO wallet address. You set the amount and submit, and you probably need to enter your two-a-day code as well. So the last thing I wanted to explain to you is the dust balances on uh, Binance. And this happens when you're uh, trading a lot, and then sometimes you have some cryptocurrencies that have like this very, very small balances, like here, for example, USD Tether. Yeah, you can't actually do anything with those balances. And you cannot trade them because they're too small. You cannot withdraw them because they're too small. So they're basically stuck in those wallets on, on the exchange. So recently, Binance added the option to convert your small balances. And a small balance is here less than 0 0.001 Bitcoin. Those balances you can convert to Binance coin. So at least they become useful if you use them, for example, for trading fees. You just click Convert to BNB, and then it says you have selected one coins, but that can be multiple if there are multiple coins with less than 0 0.001 Bitcoin, and these will be converted to this amount of BNB. So then you just press Exchange, Confirm, so successfully converted, we go back to the balances page. There you will see that the USD Tether balance has come to zero and my Binance balance has increased a little. So yeah, that works. You can do that every 24 hours. So that was it for this video about Binance and their advanced trading options stop limit orders. I hope you learned something today that will help you improve your skill in using the exchange platform. Personally, I am a big fan of Binance. The platform is very beginner friendly and this is why they onboarded so many new customers in January. I am positive about Binance and I generally and personally trust them with my crypto. Also, I recommend that you should only trade and use the describe trade order functions if you know exactly what you are doing and what and why you are buying or selling. If this video was helpful to you, of course, we appreciate your like and subscribe to our channel. Next episode, we will explore yet another exchange. If you have any suggestions for one, please let me know in the comments and maybe I can do that one in any of the next videos in this season. For now, I wish you a lot of happy green candlesticks and crypto profits. See you next time. Cheers.